Welcome to more integration problems involving trig substitution. The previous videos have already reviewed the three types of integrals that require trig substitution. Remember the first was when we have the square root of a squared minus x squared, and then when we have the square root of a squared plus x squared, and then lastly we looked at integrals involving the square root of x squared minus a squared. But I thought we should look at a couple more examples to see what else can happen when using trig substitution. This first example here, we have the square root of x squared plus six x, which doesn't seem to fit any of the three forms that we discussed. But we can complete the square of this quadratic and then it will fit one of the forms. So if we wanted to complete the square on this, we'd have x squared plus six x plus some constant to make it a perfect square trinomial. Remember to complete the square, we take half of b and square it. Well, half of six would be three, squared would be nine. Now we can't just add nine here unless we also undo it. So we're gonna go ahead and subtract nine as well. Notice the result would be zero. Now we can rewrite this quadratic as the quantity x plus three squared. Notice we still have the minus nine. So this fits the form now of the square root of x squared minus a squared, where a squared would be equal to nine, and instead of x squared, we have the quantity x plus three squared. So instead of letting x equal a secant theta, we'll let x plus three equal three secant theta. And differential x is still gonna equal three secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now let's go ahead and model angle theta in a right triangle. Secant theta would equal x plus three over three, which means the hypotenuse would be x plus three, if this was theta. The adjacent side would be three, so this leg here would be the square root of x plus three squared minus three squared, which would give us the square root of x squared plus six x. Let's go ahead and perform the trig substitution now. Dx is equal to three secant theta tangent theta d theta. And the denominator would be nine secant squared theta minus nine, which will give us three tangent theta. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Notice the factors of three simplify out, as well as the tangent thetas. So we're left with the integral of secant theta d theta, which is a basic integration formula. This is equal to the natural log, the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. So there's our antiderivative in terms of theta, but we need to express it in terms of x. So now we'll use this right triangle to express theta in terms of x. Secant theta, we already said, would be equal to x plus three divided by three. Tangent theta would be equal to the square root of x squared plus six x divided by three. Now we could use some properties of logarithms to rewrite this, but I'll go ahead and leave it like that. Let's go and take a look at another one. Here we have the square root of 16 minus x squared. This should remind us of the identity one minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. So we're gonna let x equal a sine theta. If a squared is equal to 16, a would be four. So we have x equals four sine theta. So differential x is equal to four cosine theta d theta. Let's go ahead and model this in a right triangle. The sine of angle theta is x over four. So this leg here would be the square root of four squared minus x squared or 16 minus x squared. Let's go ahead and perform the trig substitution. So x squared will be 16 sine squared theta the denominator will be 16 minus 16 sine squared theta, that'll give us four cosine theta. And then dx is equal to four cosine theta d theta. Now we can simplify the four over the four and the cosine theta over the cosine theta. So this simplifies to 16 
times the integral of sine squared theta d theta. Now we're not going to be able to integrate this in this form, so we're going to have to use an identity. Remember, sine squared theta is equal to one minus cosine two theta divided by two. So let's go ahead and perform that substitution here. We'll go ahead and factor out the one half, so we'll have 16 over two times the integral of one minus cosine two theta d theta. We can go ahead and find the antiderivative here. If we let this equal u, then du is gonna equal two d theta. So we'll have d theta is equal to one half du. So we'll have eight, the antiderivative of one with respect to theta would be theta. Then the antiderivative of negative cosine two theta would be equal to negative one half sine two theta. And of course plus c. Now the last issue we have to deal with is this sine two theta. We don't have a model for sine two theta, we just have theta. So we're gonna go ahead and do another substitution where sine two theta is equal to two sine theta cosine theta. So we're gonna have eight times theta minus, we're gonna have one half times two sine theta cosine theta, that'll just give us sine theta cosine theta. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of x. If we take this equation and solve it for theta, which we've done in several of the past videos, we'll have inverse sine of x over four minus sine theta would be x over four using the right triangle and cosine theta would be the square root of 16 minus x squared all over four and of course plus c. Now let's go ahead and distribute the eight and then we'll call it good. So we have eight inverse sine x over four. So here we have an eight and then we have a 16 in the denominator so we're gonna have a denominator of two then our numerator is going to be x times the square root of 16 minus x squared plus c. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found these additional examples helpful. Thank you for watching.